Hello everyone and welcome to the Bartlett Together Festival 2021. Today you have joined the session Narrating Nostalgia Storytelling Workshop with Women of the Wick. My name is Sarah. I am a multidisciplinary artist, writer and the founder of Women of the Wick, a feminist consultancy and a multimedia platform. Just a few um, housekeeping rules I'm going to, to read out loud to you before we start. So this session will be recorded and added to the faculty YouTube channel, Bartlett Together website and forwarded to registered attendees. We encourage you to submit a question for the speaker at any point um, during this lecture by clicking on the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. You can also submit your own questions or upload others. And we will hear a short presentation before we launch into the interactive workshop and at the end of the session. And um, please keep your pen and paper at hand. And if anyone feels comfortable sharing their work and their writing, there is an opportunity for us to hear from the audience at the end. So without further ado, I am going to start. I hope that you can all hear me really well. Okay. As I said, uh, this workshop is titled uh, Narrating Nostalgia and a little bit about the overview um, um, how, how are we going to run today so um, you can see it on the screen there will be um, time in the end for some sharing as well um, so Women of the Wick I set up Women of the Wick as a podcast in 2019 and it is basically based on the feminist poet Audre Lorde's famous essay, Your Silence Will Not Protect You, that has been my anchor and a guiding um, um, kind of line throughout the years. And really women of the week, um, the whole idea stem from the need for me to document and elevate the personal stories of local women um, and non-binary creative practitioners that were often, I felt that were often untold and overlooked in the, cost, in the context of urban development in the area of Hackney Wickham Fish Island. Today, we run two podcast series, one of them called Girl Get a Real Job, uh, which is mainly focused on normalizing um, financial literacy and money conversations amongst creative practitioners. And, and then we have another podcast series called How to Occupy Space that highlights the work of local artists, academic activists and, and architects. We've also de delivered multiple workshops, talks and reports with local partners and nonprofits such as Foundation for Future London, Creative Land Trust, Economy of Hours and BMW Foundation, to name a few. Um, at the core of everything that, that we do with Women of the Week is truly to empower uh, the marginalized voices and promote the visibility and work of female and non-binary practitioners. So simply put, we are championing marginalized voices and elevating opportunities in the creative industry. Um, and in the spirit of, of storytelling today, I'm also going to share a bit of my, my own story, um, how I landed in, in Hackney Wick. I moved to the area around eight years ago and completely fell in love with the area. Um, the first time when I entered in the um, kind of live work spaces, I think I shouted out loud, I've come home. Um, then quite quickly, um, due to the, um, the Summer Olympics in 2013, the area started to change quite um, rapidly. And in 2017, I ran a Save Hackney Wick campaign together with other local um, residents and I think we were all quite shocked to see how swiftly the landscape changed um, and around 200 artists were forced to move out of their studios and their beloved area started to look very different to how I got to know it. 
that also sparked me to this ongoing research on wanting to understand displacement, nostalgia, belonging, and home. Um, now I've discovered that this topic is much, much larger and runs much deeper than I could have ever imagined that has embarked me on a journey of understanding ancestral roots, but that is for another workshop. Um, and I've attached here a quote uh, from Maya Angelou, the ache for home lives in all of us, that it is the safe place where we can go as we are and not be questioned. This, for me, is one of the reasons as well why I said a woman of the wick, in order to tell stories that perhaps we haven't wanted to tell aloud before, for whatever reason that is, and have that same sense of belonging that I once felt when I moved to the area of Hackney Wick and Fish Island. But today we are to focus on nostalgia and the concept of solastalgia as well. Um, and also to get to write those, those own stories related to those, those, those teams. So I'm going to start um, by looking at some of the um, kind of findings of my research on, on nostalgia. The modern understanding of nostalgia is not as straightforward as its colloquial use may imply. At the end of the 17th century, homesickness, which is considered as a type of nostalgia, was treated as a medical illness or as a hypochondria of the heart, as the Swiss doctor Johannes Hofer described the condition. Now, around a century later, longing for home became a central trope of romantic nationalism, as, as the cultural theorist Svetlana Boim notes in her really brilliant essay I recommend for everyone to look at called Future Nostalgia. And since the 18th century, many poets and artists have embraced the term in, in its romantic notion. If we are to present and look forward, we must also remember the past. Nostalgia isn't just a sentimental reaction of grasping at the past, but it is also a way to hold space for memories and accept the, in the, the inevitable, the loss of places we, we once have known them. Therefore, nostalgia is not only a sign of, of being stuck in the past, but rather a tool enabling us to move between times and, and, and memories and, and shift between the past, present and future. And, and by doing so, creating a, a, a sort of a, a no time and space. And Throughout this session, I would like you to as well consider what do our current longings of lost spaces and places and homes and sites tell us about the current times we live in. I know that mourning and, 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 and loss was evident, especially during, um, during COVID. And I think we experienced homesickness, most of us, in a level that we haven't really before. Um, so I think, you know, it is also, it is a current team theme still today, even though we are looking at maybe world in a more, more of a post pandemic scope. And my intent is to look at nostalgia's capacity to understand the times we live in um, and the ways in which our memories create this so-called no time and space. And it is also attached to the built environment in those quickly gentrifying and expanding urban areas in the ever-changing and vertically growing, growing skylines of London in changing neighborhood shops and, and memories of, of old homes as well. 
I'm going to take a sip of water and dive into um, the two concepts by Svetlana Boim, um, restorative and reflective nostalgias that have helped me to understand this ongoing um, longing that I have, I have felt and perhaps even um, yeah, a, a sense of displacement of sort of that have then realized further on um, after talking with um, people who've experienced different types of displacement um, where that they can also be um, cross-generational and um, kind of expand over time and space through storytelling. However, let's look at these two concepts right now. So. Restor restorative nostalgia puts emphasis on, on nostos, on, on returning home, and uh, pro proposes to rebuild the lost home and patch up the, the so-called kind of memory gaps. Um, whereas uh, reflective nostalgia dwells in uh, aching, in longing and loss, and the imperfect processes of remembering, really. Restorative um, nostalgia evokes national past and future. Reflective nostalgia is more about the individual cultural memory. And I guess thinking about the different types of nostalgias, restorative nostalgia, to my understanding, is something that, that we are more stuck in the past in sense of homesickness is, is a type of restorative nostalgia where the aching takes over of the current and the present whereas refre reflective nostalgia gives us gives us space to maybe even find pleasure in the old memories and in recreating the past by um looking into the past I, I used the kind of Portuguese um, word saudade uh, or saudade <laughs> depending on whether you're Brazilian or, or, or Portuguese from Portugal um, when you may look at the past with a smile on your face and remember things and then keeping alive the traditions and memories through culture through music um, through oral storytelling to through poetry um, so it is, in a sense, active in its longing and remembering of the past. Solastalgia, uh, as opposed to nostalgia, uh, which we can look at as a, as a melancholia or homesickness ex experienced by, by individuals. So solastalgia is the distress that is produced by environmental changes impacting people while they are still connected to, to di directly connected to their home environments and witnessing the destruction and the changes. Um, so yes, it's a form of emotional existential distress caused by sudden changes in the environment and, um, and um, a sense of lack of control as well. You know, so nostalgia is often attached to uh, climate change and nomadism, attached to climate change, global environmental changes, also in urban areas in as part of gentrification processes. Um, anthropophilia um, is then having a strong sense of belonging somewhere, a strong sense of um, uh, love towards a place, a love of certain aspects of such space or place. Um, and this was especially, um, I think, formed the term by Yifu Tuan, um, describing it as the effective bond with one's environment. And um, I haven't really looked at how is our um, Q&A or chat box uh, working on at the minute, but I would also like to us to um, 
go for the first writing prompt. So as I requested in the beginning, please um, have a pen and paper in hand. Um, I'm just going to give maybe a minute or half a minute for people to get, gather their, um, their pens and papers. And I'm going to give you 12 words related to these topics of nostalgia, home, displacement, identity. And I'm asking you to include these words as part of the story. So exactly following the structure when I give these words to you. I hope this makes sense. I can't see or hear any of you. So <laughs> if this doesn't make sense, I um, um, I just look at the, the slides. So hopefully that will give a guidance, but just gonna take another sip of water and then we can soon start. Okay, I'm gonna put my timer on. And, okay, just give me one second. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the first word and I'm always going to repeat the words twice. So every word will be repeated twice, included as part of your story once. <laughs> okay, let's start the timer. Okay, first word, home, home, London, London. Family, family. Sky, sky. Personality, personality. September, September. Familiar, familiar. Gentrification, gentrification. Suddenly, suddenly.
train station, train station. Alone, alone. Place, place. Forever, forever. Okay, and time is up. Um, I think the chat function should work. So it would be really wonderful if you would like to share your, your stories. Um, there is now, I can see there is one. That's beautiful. Um, and so if you would like to add your stories there, please do. At the end, there will also be um, a link to your Jamboard. Um, and if you do place your, your, your story to the Jamboard, then I will also select those to, to post on a, on a Women of the Week Instagram page. That would be really wonderful to, to also read your current stories here. And if anyone would like to read their poems aloud, please raise your hand and, and you can also share it out loud. That would be incredible to hear them. Um, I just wanna wait a couple more minutes if there are more stories that are going to come here. Just paste them, write them without um, thinking about too much. Um, and yes, Nishad is adding some extra um, guidelines there, so if you would like to, like I already said, the raise the hand um, button and let's read our stories aloud. Um, Rui Gi Wang said, I will leave my hometown for four days after to go to the further education. It's so sad sitting in my bedroom with all the things. Yeah, I bet. Yes, for sure. <sighs> um, big topics. Okay. If we are ready, I'm going to give a couple more minutes. I'm perhaps going to read the first one before we're going to move to the next writing prompt, as I can't see you if you are ready, but perhaps you can also use the chat just to let me know if you're ready to continue to the next writing prompt. Okay, we have a hand up. Um, okay, can I... Stop maybe sharing for a second. Hi there, can you hear me? Hi, I can hear just fine. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Egle. Egle, nice to meet you. How are you? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. Sorry if I look a bit confused because I'm looking at like two screens at once. Same here, don't worry. Would you like to read us your poem? 
Yes, of course. And Amazing. So Thank you. Of words of coveliness, um, out because I was kind of like um, writing everything as every word came into being. But um, it resonated with me because I moved to London 10 years ago. So it was kind of like you telling my story for me. <laughs> um, so it goes as far away from home as I could be, stepping foot onto the streets of London at least with remnants of my family. The sky is still the same, thousands of miles away. This is my personality, my anchor, holding me in place on 26th of September, 11 years ago. Nothing familiar, my memory itself fading suddenly, like underground train station with train that almost took a lane. So it's a bit abstract because, you know, <laughs> that's beautiful thank you so much for sharing it thank you so much for sharing it it's incredible how coherent that poem is as if you had like had time to to write it and really reflect on those those thoughts yes thank you now as i said as you were reading the words i felt like you were telling that story of mine from 11 years ago which is pretty strange <laughs> There are no coincidences. Um, thank you so much. And please, I really uh, encourage you to also submit to the Jamboard if you'd like to be included in the um, in the Women of the Week Instagram page. And hopefully then somewhere else at a later stage or, or, a, or a blog post, but that for now at least. So yeah, the link I think is in the chat. And I think we have uh, Fergal as well, if, um, if you would like to read your poem. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, so it's long. I didn't realize it was meant to be a poem, um, but I used all the words. Um, uh, and it's all about going back to uni because I'm in the third year, but I interrupted last year. So uh, it's going back and everyone's graduated, so I don't know anyone. But all right. Um, for the first time in months, home is being left behind. I've been out of the house and out into London, but home is my area. Home is my family. Home is my sky above the house, filled with its personal, personable personality. September brings familiar occurrences, familiarities that were familiar years ago. After the change the world has taken it, has taken, it all feels strange, like a familiar street suddenly gentrified, as if you get on a train from a train station you've never been to before. But I'm not alone despite being on my own. New places in familiar spaces have new people and their new pets. Just as the last lot, none of these will be forever. Move on in time against the ever-changing background, despite not moving very far. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. Um, that was rhyming as well. How did you feel? How did yeah. it feel like to you? No, it's fun. I've been doing some, because I did a gap year, I've been doing yeah. some writing and... Uh, um, you know, I was quite excited to find out there was a there was a writing workshop. So amazing, amazing! Thanks so much for sharing your words. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. I think we have um, Ifsa. Yes, please. Um, Hi, sorry. That's okay. Um, did we lose you, Ifsa? Are you still there? Yeah. Hello. 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 Oh, sorry, it's a bit louder. I am. <laughs> okay. Could you? Would it? Would it be possible for you to um to turn your camera on? Uh, yeah. I can move really quickly. Give me two seconds. Somewhere quieter. So. Here, let me. Take okay. That. No worries. Great. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good, thank you. So I did a story as well. I didn't realize it was supposed to be a poem, but it doesn't need to be a poem. I just call them <laughs> poems because I think they come out as poems. Yeah, they kind of do actually, but um, yeah, stay with yours. <laughs> Um, I wrote, I'm sad, I miss home. I look out the window and I see places I don't know. I'm in London, so far from home, yet such beautiful things. It's so shiny and busy and new. Not home though, not near my family, nowhere near. The city is not my family either. The sky is different too. It's too big here. I see its um, personality though, its desires, and I hear the world in it. 
but it's only September and I have all year to get used to and know this new personality of a place. Maybe it will become familiar because my family, oh, maybe it will become familiar, become my family. I hear words like gentrification. I hear the negativity of losing your home. I feel the same. The sense of home is gone. London is so big and developing. It's hard to keep up all of a sudden. I see how people from London also might not feel at home. It's almost as if it's a stranger to all. I wish I could get to the train station and run away as I'm all alone here in this huge big city, run back to home, back to the place I know and to the place I grew, back to the family I have, um, wait, back to the family that is where I'm from forever. And I, am I being regal? Am I just missing home? This nostalgia is affecting me. Affecting me. I want to go and be forever. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I love the personality of a place line. I'm from London as well, so I don't know why I went as London being a stranger. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's quite fun, actually. This is probably the most fun like topic this week. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks so much for sharing. Please. Thank you so much. Please add those as well. If you've got a time just to type it out, I would love to see these as well, like in a written format. Um, that's beautiful. Thanks so much for sharing. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> I think we might have got one more and then we might need to, to, to ne go to the next writing prompt. Um, I can't see the names, unfortunately, but if you can unmute yourself, um, um, Donali. Hi, hi. Hey, uh, how are you? If you can see my video. <laughs> yeah, I can see you perfectly well. Yeah, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Um, I just wanted to say I loved this exercise and it's, uh, it's very nice to see what you've written because you don't expect that to come out when you're hearing all the words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you like to read yeah. your, your piece? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so again, it's not a poem, it's a story, but here I go. <laughs> Home is family, the one you're born into and the one that you choose. You make yourself comfortable in their presence and trust them. After moving to London, I have this void that I seek to need to fill. Having been surrounded by family over the pandemic has made me realize their importance in my life. The sky seems more clear and I have a refreshed perspective of my personality. Time inside has given me time to grow, evaluate and assess. This September has been a very interesting time. Having moved back to London, a place that is so familiar yet so new is beyond exciting. Exploring the city from a new lens almost seems like a gentrification of the mind. Picking up on details I had never focused on before, that by allowing me to suddenly appreciate the city a lot more than I used to. Hearing the constant hustle and bustle from the nearby train station gives me a sense of comfort, never allowing me to feel alone. I shall now try to make this place my new home, find people that make me feel comfortable again. I know this experience will make me grateful forever and help me become an even better version of myself. Mm. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Were there any kind of I don't know, renovations for you? It's like something that you didn't think that they were like revealing something that you were? Um, I think it was the whole uh, fact that, okay, so I'm from Singapore and I did my undergrad in the UK. Mm. And then I went back during the pandemic and just time home made me feel really good. But I didn't realize how good it made me feel until I wrote it out. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, thanks for helping me appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your words, Anali. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And there are also beautiful, beautiful poems in the chat box. Um, I guess I also love the gentrification of the mind. Um, what a brilliant line. <laughs> I feel like stealing all of these. No, just kidding. That's just such a brilliant use of the same words that, yeah, like in such different ways. Um, and please continue writing your words in the in the chat box and let's continue to the next exercise. Um, and this time, um, write a first person story. Um, which site, place or a person do you long for that feels or perhaps once felt like home? And start with the sentence, I remember when. And if you get stuck at any point, if you don't know how to continue the story, use the phrase again. I mean, you can use it as many times as you like. Um, and I'm going to give you 
I think we can give seven minutes. We still have some sharing time left or is five better? Oh, and I, maybe I'll just give seven minutes because um, it just takes a bit longer perhaps to write. Um, okay, I think that's probably pretty straightforward. I'm just going to start the timer and also read all the beautiful poems in the chat box in the meanwhile. Okay, one, two, three, let's go. Yes, I can say, well, can you see my screen? Am I still sharing the screen? Um, Catherine asked at the chat. So the writing prompt is to write a first, is, is to write a first person story. Um, which site, place or person do you long for that feels like home or once felt like home? Start with the sentence, I remember when. And you can repeat the sentence, I remember when, as long as, as much as you like. If you don't know what to write next, to start with the sentence, I remember when. I hope that's, uh, that's clear. We've got five more minutes. Three and a half minutes left. And if your poems are ready or story, short stories are ready already, um, you can start pasting them on the chat box as well.
Thanks, Nishet, also adding the Jamboard link. Feel free to populate the, the site there as well. Twenty five seconds left. And time is up. Okay. Wow, I also got to write something. And I think we have uh, this here. If you would like to read your your words aloud, I'd love to. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes I can hear you. Hey. Hi, yeah, so mine's also kind of like a story. So I'll read it right now. Yes, please go ahead. I remember when the open seas and ocean used to be my home, when the vast oceans with never ending horizons became my anchor of calmness. I remember when I waited for school to close for summer so that we could join my dad on ship, on his ship, sailing to lands unknown. I would have guessed we had no direction if it wasn't for the maps with the little red icons. Somehow in the middle of the blue sea, without the sight of land or other ships, in the, in the place which felt like nothing, felt like the place that once made me feel at home. I miss this the most. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. If you wanna share any other words that how you felt related to the poem, feel free to. Um, yeah, so I, I used to sail a lot when I was younger and um, uh, it was funny because uh, the ships used to go to different seas and it, it never, they, we never had a permanent place to be, but I kind of got used to that and I felt like that felt like home as mm -hmm. a new thing. There's always change. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's very different for me because I always expect change mm. because of these experiences. Yeah. Mm, that feel familiar. Have you written before? Have you, are you familiar to kind of poetry or storytelling? Um, I do a little bit of writing. Uh, yeah, I'm, I write a few articles on rethinking the website. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do, yeah, that's uh, related to architecture itself. Amazing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but add, add your words to the Jamboard or the chat box. I'd love to read them also in that way. Thank you so much, Desia. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, we have uh, Gianni. Apologies if I'm misspelling your words. Um, was Tianu? Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Hey, how are you? Yeah, perfectly well. Well, I would like to share my story. Please, stage is yours. Okay, I remember when the first day, uh, about three days ago, um, while I arrived in London, due to self uh due to the self-isolating and other reasons, I just stayed in my room, you know, without any food or water, and I'm so I was so starving. Mm. Then I used the app Hungry Panda to order my dinner. And then when I a nice and warm-hearted African dude, he just uh, delivered my food to me, Chinese food. It's very, really like at home, you know, because the food delivery is very popular in current China. And I was so moved that man was so patient when I cannot get him. Mm. How did you feel when you write? Mm, I feel very familiar. 
with the feeling of getting my food in up uh, in the downstairs because I always um, order the food in China. Mm. Have you... I'm not good at cooking. <laughs> and you moved to London very recently. Yes, just uh, three days ago. Oh, I'm wow. still self isolating. Wow. Well, thanks so much for sharing sharing your words. I really, really appreciate sharing it. Thank you very much. That's great. And also write them as well. That would be great if you could do that as well. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much. I think we have um, maybe two more people. Ruigi? Is, is Ruigi here? Whenever you are ready to switch on your camera and hello. Hello, hello. can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, so um, as the, the last um, schoolmate, I'm also from China. So my story is a bit uh, similar with him because it's also about the taste of food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I um, yeah. so I remember when last week when I was seated with all of my family members and we were, uh, it, it was the Chinese uh, most popular festival, the Moon Festival, and we were making dumplings. So in the last two years, I was away from home, and um, I always uh, see I always seek foods that, that have the same similar taste with my uh, family's food. And uh, during that night, my sister was um, taught me how to make um, noodles, and the feeling is so just deeply moved. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes it's the taste of food. It can heal us deep in our heart. Mm. Yeah, so that's my story. Thank I, you. I think as Chinese people, we all like food. So. And, 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 you know, food, senses, smells, like they are so attached to our memories. They really carry memories like I felt like when I was I closed my eyes when you were reading and I felt that I was able to like smell things as well <laughs> when we closed one of our senses um thank you thank you so much Ricky thank you thank you um let's go then we have to move forward I would love to hear one more if let's go you're able to switch on your your camera and your microphone Hi, yes, okay. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, okay, I'll read mine. Thank you. I remember when you used to hold my hand. Your rough skin reminded me of how hard you worked. When I left you, you always complained asking me to come back. When you left me, it was permanent, so you could never come back. I despise the place you called home. It can never be my home without you. In that space, I remember when it was a home, when you complained asking me to come back. Now it stands hollow, like my hand without yours. Yeah, that's it. Wow, I got chills. <laughs> the, what was the line about, um, I despised? What? Yeah, yeah, so um, a few years ago, my mother passed away. Um, so I couldn't go home because every time I was there, it was home, but it wasn't home because she wasn't there. So that's mm -hmm. what the whole poem really is about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. Please yeah. share that. Please share that. <laughs> okay, will do. Thank you so much. This workshop is also really amazing, by the way. Love amazing. It. Thank you. <laughs> because of you. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> um, okay, I can see. I mean, I wish we'd have time to read all of them right now. Um, yeah, that was truly really incredible. Whew. Okay, we do have one more writing prompt left, but I'm um, mindful of time. We've got only three more minutes, but I'm just sharing the writing prompt on the screen. And 
it is to pick up a detail from the same memory that you shared now, that you wrote now, um, an object or a living being that is foreign to, you, to who you are. And it can be anything. It could be a house, it could be a detail, it could be a tree, it could be whatever, what, what, whatever is kind of relevant to the story, but, but it's not, but is this also at the same time foreign to who you are? And then write the story from the object's point of view. So you become the object and you tell the same story, but from the object's point of view. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the time to do this together, but because there is the Jamboard link, I would encourage you to, you know, use the extra, take five more minutes on your own, maybe set a timer or do it without the timer. It doesn't need to be so time sensitive and, and add it to the Jamboard. Please, that would be so incredible. And then, um, so those stories, I think it was already shared, but then will be then uh, a selection of those will be added to Women of the Wix um, Instagram. And please also um, uh, follow us there or contact me. Uh, it's info at womenofthewick.com if you would like to get in touch, um, have a chat, do a collaboration. Um, and, and we also run um workshops um and and poetry sessions and lots of different things exciting workshops coming up as well with different local partners and most of them are taking place on zoom so even if you're located somewhere else in 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 london um it would be wonderful for uh for you to to join and welcome to the community as well i'm just going to stop sharing my screen at this place and yeah, thank you all so much for your absolutely incredible stories and courage to speak up and tell your truth. I didn't say that before, but one of the biggest um, assets that we all have is our voice. And for us to um, speak our truth and use that voice like that you did today, it's an immensely powerful tool, whether you are an architect, an urban planner, whether you decide to start your own business, whatever you do, if you are a writer or speaker, it is, it's something that we all have and um, own your stories and that's it. <laughs> I think I could finish, finish it by those words. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I think we are on the dot of time. So thanks also, uh, Nishat, for so incredibly hosting there in the background and keeping everything going. Really grateful for the opportunity that Bartlett gave me to, to share this with all of you. I would love to read all of the comments now. I hope they get saved as well somewhere. So um, thank you so much. <laughs>